So today we're going to be tackling CPAP versus BiPAP. Welcome to my channel, my name is James, this is that med guy. I post every Monday on EMS topics, medical related stuff, whatever comes to mind or if anyone drops a topic below. So let's jump straight in. So what does this have in common with CPAP? Well, absolutely nothing, it's just a really cute dog. Let's actually get to the real business. What does this have to do with CPAP? Well, CPAP is just one pressure. What am I talking about? So CPAP stands for continuous positive airway pressure. So not like PEEP, PEEP is more positive end expiratory pressure. It's the pressure once you've exhaled all the way at the end. So your lungs stay inflated. If you're not sure what PEEP is, I have a video on basic and advanced ventilations. I'll link that up here. So CPAP is continuous positive airway pressure, meaning that there's just a constant blow of air into their airway. It's a form of non-invasive ventilation. So there's no endotracheal tube, there's no other may, anything like that. The patient's generally GCS 15 and they're breathing by themselves. It's kind of like a requirement to use non-invasive. So what kind of patients are you going to be using CPAP on? Well, these are patients like your pulmonary edema. You get to a patient who's got pulmonary edema, they're severely hypoxic. You put this mask on their face and you set your pressures starting at like five uh, centimeters of water. Don't go higher than 25. And what that does is it just adds positive pressure into the lungs. So when they breathe in, they get help breathing in. And when they breathe out, they breathe out against a resistance, which then also increases their pressure in their lungs, which helps to get rid of the fluid in their lungs. So that would be a good example of CPAP, so continuous positive airway pressure. Then on the other side of the spectrum, there is BiPAP. So BiPAP is, uh, BiPAP, what does this stand for? It's two, two PAP, what I kind of see, because there's two different levels of positive airway pressure. So with CPAP, you only set one pressure. With BiPAP, you set two pressures by to so what are the pressures so you set inspiratory and you set expiratory why would that be helpful so copd would be a good example for bipap because they struggle to get air in but they don't struggle to get air out so we want to try help them um, improve their like ie ratios and so what we're trying to do is we will increase their inspiratory pressure, but they'll but then we'll decrease their expiratory pressure. So that when they breathe in, they get pressure, but when they breathe out, they get less pressure. Where CPAP, you don't get that. CPAP is just a continuous pressure. BiPAP, you have increase in your inspiration, but a decrease in the resistance of your ventilation on your expiration. So those would be the two big difference between CPAP and BiPAP. They're both um, non-invasive but your BiPAP, you can set more settings where your CPAP, you cannot. So there's a lot of debate about whether you should be using BiPAP in asthma. In my opinion, if you perform an RSI on a asthma patient, you have failed somewhere along the line because it doesn't actually fix the problem. Um, it's not going to really help. In fact, you're probably gonna cause the air trapping to worsen. Where is BiPAP gonna come into play with asthma? So a patient who is severely lethargic or has now like exhausted all their energy trying to breathe in asthma, which can happen quite later on in asthma, they really struggle to get air out but they don't struggle to get air in. So where does BiPAP come in place with asthma? Patients can become very exhausted because they've been trying to breathe for so hard for so long. So what happens is that we can use BiPAP on these patients because they need help to inhale, but obviously they're having problems with air trapping. So we need to be very careful about that. So what we do is we set the inspiratory pressure to five or 10. We can slowly build it up to 25, but the expiratory pressure we set to zero. So there is no resistance against their exhale, only when they inhale. So we're helping them breathe. Well, that's pretty much the point, but this is very special because normally we would say, well, you know, BiPAP and asthma is how you kill them. Actually, BiPAP and asthma is how you save them. This article here, they had a control who just got standardized treatment and then they had the intervention group where they gave patients BiPAP. The BiPAP group um, improved significantly quicker only 20% of the BiPAP group got hospitalized, 60% of the um, control group who got standardized care got hospitalized. So that is a three times difference 
in the number of patients who got hospitalized because of asthma when they don't receive BiPAP. So that was very interesting and I'll link that article down below. Then another place where you might want to use CPAP, which is also another debated topic, is a delayed sequence intubation. So what that means is that um, we might come across a flash pomodema patient and they're severely hypoxic and they're combative. So we'll dose them with ketamine, like one or two milligrams per kilogram ketamine, and they'll disassociate and you will then put them on CPAP and this will then oxygenate them and ventilate them. This is obviously um, relatively risky, so you need to have all of your RSI meds ready and be ready to uh, go all the way with the RSI. However, you don't need to go straight away because we're going to try and oxygenate them. If you haven't heard of the hop killers, um, a reason to not intubate someone, I've also made a video up here, I'll link that in the description as well, is that when we have a patient who's hypoxic, it's an extremely um, hazardous RSI, and so we want to try and oxygenate them first. So if we do a delayed sequence intubation, we can give them ketamine, they disassociate, we put them on CPAP, and then they reoxygenate. From that point on, you can then push your paralytics, and you can RSI and Bob's your uncle. However, you can actually just pause right there, and the patient might improve. If they improve to a point where they start waking up, and there's no need to RSI them, you've now saved yourself from performing an RSI, which I would always prefer over performing an RSI because they are risky. And so really what's happening is that um, whenever you do something like this, you need to know what you're doing, obviously, and you need to be right there by their side. You're not gonna give them the ketamine and be like, well, they're fine, and you're leaving them on the CPAP. Obviously, if they vomit or if their tongue falls back or if the ketamine causes apnea, you're gonna have a, another range of problems. So because ketamine um, maintains their um, patency of the airway and they maintain their reflex, it's important that we can give them ketamine, but we also need to be careful that they might vomit and aspirate or they might become apneic and we then need to go all the way through with the RSI. So that would be another place where you could potentially use CPAP. Um, even if they don't have pulmonary edema, but they have something else that's causing severe hypoxia and you need to ventilate them or you need to oxygenate them more before you perform the RSI, you can do a delayed sequence and you can put them on CPAP, you can oxygenate them, push your paralytics, leave the CPAP mask on, count your 60 seconds, only once they're actually apneic do you take off the mask because during that whole point or during that whole period, you're maintaining airway pressures and that's maintaining the diffusion of oxygen. So remember, don't push your um, rock or your sucks and then take off the mask and then count 60. You leave the mask on and you count 60 because you're going to maintain that pressure, maintain that denitrogenation and all that sweet stuff. So guys, hope you did enjoy this. Um, I'd love to hear stories from you guys, whether you have CPAP or you have BiPAP. Um, have, you, have you ever used BiPAP in asthma? I'd love to know. Uh, please always remember to hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.